welcome. Today we are going to tie up a small little soft tackle fly for panfish. This is called a, a gill candy. It is just like your traditional soft tackle flies. Uh, it's tied on a standard nymph hook, a little bit heavier hook. This is a Mustad 3906 hook in a size 6. Most of your soft tackles are tied in 12s and 14s. Uh, but this is for panfish, so we're going to go a little bit bigger. Size 6 and size 8 I find are good sizes for panfish. Like most of your soft tackles, it has all the standard uh, pieces and parts. We've got a gold and silver mylar tag in the back. The body is going to be made out of 140 denier Wopsy thread, UTC thread. Uh, you can make it out of floss, the original. Uh, fly or at least as the original that I found out there was tied with a, a four strand rayon floss and they were going to use a body uh, or thorax I should say of um, ice dub in this case chartreuse and then we've got a hackle around the front again the original um, that I had found on the internet is uh, was tied with Hungarian partridge and a lot of your soft tackles are traditionally tied with Hungarian partridge. But we're going to be using an African guinea uh, fowl. Um, I like the uh, greater contrast between the uh, light and dark portions of this. So I think when the uh, legs stick out, you've got a lot better contrast in it uh, than the Hungarian partridge. But if you have Hungarian partridge, by all means, use Hungarian partridge. So let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, I had found this uh, a number of years ago out on the internet, and there will be a link in the description down below. Just uh, press on uh, more down below in the description. You'll find a link to the original um, so that if you want to see how that's done comparatively, it's done pretty much about the same. Like I said, it's a little bit different materials. So we're going to mount our hook in the vise. If you want to, you can go ahead and debarb that. Um, once we mount the hook in the vise, we're going to take our 140 denier UTC chartreuse thread and we're going to attach it just about a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap down the hook shank trying to just get nice touching turns so I get a nice base layer of thread along the hook shank till I get to the end of the hook shank and where the thread hangs there it's going to be between the point of the hook and the barb. That's a good spot. Now we're gonna go ahead and tie in our tag, or I should say, um, this is just regular gold and silver mylar tinsel. This is a size 12. You can use a size 14 if you want. Um, I'm going to bring this up underneath the thread like this with the silver side up so that when we wrap that in, it will flip over to the gold side. And then I'm going to pull the tinsel down so that I just have the, the tip of the tinsel right here underneath the thread at the end of the shank. There are other ways you can turn around and secure that end. I'm trying to minimize any bump of thread or, or materials back at the back end. Um, but this one I like simply because it helps to conserve the tinsel a little bit more. I'm going to put in four or five wraps going down the hook shank and then back up to where I originally tied that in because this is just a short, real short two to three, maybe four if you're using a narrower uh, mylar tinsel uh, turn tag on the end of this. Now, rather than try and fold this over here and have to always move my thread out of the way to get around the point of the hook, I'm actually going to turn this over in my vise like this because then the thread is hanging out of the way. It opens up the gap of the hook right here in order for me to turn around and wrap that tag in. And as I mentioned, I'm only going to get about three wraps of that in on the back here. And then I'm going to go ahead and anchor that down. I will get three wraps of thread right in front of each other to anchor that tag down to the hook shank and once I have that in I'll pull that a little bit tight right here just to flatten out anything underneath those thread wraps and then I'm just going to cut that tinsel off. As you can see I only have just a small tag end here and if I get nice touching turns along the hook shank here it flattens that right out 
and I minimize how much bump I have here. At this point, I'm using the thread to build up the body of this. This is where normally you would tie in some floss if you wanted to use that, but I'm gonna use my thread. I'm gonna have the thread go to, up to the eye of the hook, or I should say the end of the body up here, and then back down and back up again, so three times in order to just get a nice smooth body here, and it will basically uh, smooth out with that tag. The one thing I do want to do is I want to give my thread a little bit of a counterclockwise twist if needed so that I flatten that thread out and then that way when I'm wrapping nice touching turns up the hook shank here, I'm minimizing any ridges um, and, uh, in the thread. I want to try and keep that to a nice flat body. So I'll wrap this up to where the end of the body right here where we first tied in and then I'll start wrapping this back down again. Numerous times I'll have to give my bobbin a little bit of a counterclockwise twist because as I am wrapping this in as a right handed fly tire I'm actually putting a clockwise twist in that thread every time I come around so I have to occasionally give it a counterclockwise twist to keep that thread as flat as I can. You certainly don't have to do this um, and, and be that fastidious about it if you don't want to. Um, we are going to put some UV resin on here to protect the thread from little panfish teeth. So it really, I suppose, doesn't matter, but I like it this way. It's a nice smooth body. And then we are going to stop right here where we first tied in our thread. At this point, I'm actually going to give my bobbin a clockwise twist just to twist that thread up a little bit. I don't want this to flatten out as I wrap back in a moment for the thorax. So we have our tag in and we have our body on here. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put some UV. This is just a, a bug bond. Um, and it is a original light formula. I'm going to put some UV resin on the body here and use my bodkin to sm smear that around. I like the bug bond because when it cures, um, it's not tacky. There's no tackiness to it, so I don't have extra steps to do. Uh, if you've ever used the UV materials, some of them, when you cure them, have a tacky residue on there for different reasons. But the bug bond doesn't, so I don't have an extra step to do with this. I want to make certain I have just enough to cover the body. I don't want any droops or sags up under here as I'm curing this. So I'll take the excess off. Once I have that where I want it, I'll get my UV light out and I'll go ahead and cure the UV resin on top of the body. Again, if you don't have the UV resin, by all means, just use head cement or some hardest hull or something like that. And it's just to protect the body a little bit from the small little teeth that panfish have. So now that's all cured and protected. I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna move back down about three wraps or so so that I have about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and where I'm gonna put the thorax in. Again, the thorax is just simply made up of some um, some ice dub. This is a chartreuse ice dub to match the, the body. I'm going to be sparse with this. I want to have a thin, um, excuse me, thin dubbing noodle. I don't want it real thick because if it's real, real thick all through here when I put it on, it's harder for me to control the placement and size of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a, a longer thin dubbing noodle. You can use some wax on your fingers to grip this a little bit more. I generally just lick my fingers just a little bit just to get them moist and give, you, give me a little friction as I am trying to twist this onto the thread. So as you can see I have basically just a fairly long thin dubbing noodle here. Now I'll start to wrap that in and see I can control the size and the placement 
of that thorax as it grows so that I'm not falling into this space here where the hackle's going to be and I just get a nice little tight ball right there. I'm going to move my thread up to the eye of the hook and at this point I'm going to change over to my 70 denier black. Now I used a 140 denier chartreuse for the body. You could use a 210 denier if you want. The thicker the thread is, the faster that body will build up in those wraps. I used a 140. You could use a 70 if you want. But for the head, I'm going to go ahead and change over to black and I'm just going to use a 70 denier black simply because it gives me better control over the size of the head and the hackle. I'm going to wrap that in from the eye and wrap back on top of my chartreuse thread and the tag of black up to the thorax to anchor the thread in and then I can cut that chartreuse thread out. I've already got a guinea hackle out. Um, I generally want to get a feather that is going to have the hackle fibers long enough so they go from about front of the thorax to the bend of the hook or a little bit past. We're going to take this and we're going to hold it by the tip and I'm going to stroke those fibers back so that I can open up the tip right here like this and then I'm going to tie in the whole tip of this feather right here. These are the fibers that are going to end up being the legs of the fly as I wrap it around, not the tip. So I'm going to, where that's opened up, I'm going to lay that on the hook shank and I'm going to wrap my thread two or three times around that anchoring in. Now I could cut this tip out if I wanted to, but it's much easier just to fold that on back and then put a wrap or two of thread on top of it it is pointed in the back there, but it's not going to affect the, the fly and the performance of the fly eventually. Um, it's just a little bit quicker step. I'm going to bring the thread forward a little bit. I'm actually going to put a few more wraps in to get a nice even tying platform for that hackle, just to tidy that up a little bit. I'm going to take my hackle and I'm going to stroke the fibers back out of the way. And that's just so that when I'm wrapping this forward like this, it minimizes the number of hackles that might be sticking out forward that way. Your traditional soft hackles usually have about two wraps of hackle around so that all these legs here tend to be more sparse. However, for panfish, I like a little bit more. Um, I think in more that are flowing and wiggling around in the water, the better it helps. So that's three turns, which is traditionally, not traditionally, but typically what I do on this fly. But I have a real long feather here, so I'm going to actually go with a fourth turn just to give it a little bit of extra. I'm going to anchor that feather in, pull it out to open it up. I'm going to put in three wraps around there. And rather than try and cut that feather off, um, a little bit quicker and neater is to turn around and take the feather and all the fibers and stroke them backwards. From here I can start on the head of the fly just behind the eye of the hook. And as I am building the head of the fly and moving backwards, it's going to anchor the stem of that pointing backwards and all those hackle fibers up against the thorax. And then I can finish the head of the fly up. Put in a five turn whip finish right here at the head. And then this portion, the remaining portion of that hackle is very easily just popped right out. As you can see, the hackle fibers are kind of smooshed down from pulling them back and everything. So I'm going to take a moment to kind of pull them back out so that they stick out, not 90 de degrees, but you know, 45, 60, whatever, just so that they're sticking out a little bit more. That way when they're in the water, they'll wiggle and flow around. So now to finish off the head here, you could use a regular head cement if you want, or a hardest hull or something like that. Because I have the bug bond or the UV resin out here, I'm just gonna get about half a drop of UV resin and just place it right here onto 
the head right on the fly and I'm just going to basically move that around and get a nice thin coat of UV on there or UV resin I should say. And I'll go ahead and use my torch to cure that and that will pretty much complete the fly. Just like that. If you're going to go out for an evening or an afternoon, just some light pan fish uh, fishing or something like that, say with the two or three weight, you just want to have a little fun. These are great little flies because you can cast them in along the weeds or the docks, uh, you know, along stick ups and logs and things like this, wherever the panfish are, and they'll just suck them right down. They're great. Good colors are the chartreuse, uh, pink is a good color, blue is actually a good color, as well as olives, purples, um, and reds uh, I fished that, are, that all work very, very well. So that is the gill candy. I hope you enjoyed that. And always remember, it's fly tying and it's fun. Mm -hmm.